Hello and welcome to WAPER's uh, webinar on Microsoft Teams, um, five things IT leaders haven't thought about. Thank you all for joining us. Um, WAPER's CEO Tim Mercer is joined today by Ali Mosin, um, who is a Partner Transformation Director at WaveNet. Um, please remember that if you have any questions today, please submit them in the question box and we will answer them at the end of the webinar. So I'll hand over to you, Tim, to introduce Ali. Thanks, Retta. Appreciate it. Morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining. Um, this is our third or fourth uh, webinar now where we have a little bit up close and personal with, with uh, some leaders of the, of the game. Today's Ali uh, from WaveNet, our partner for Teams. And um, we're going to we're going to cover quite a lot today, um, back and forth between the pair of us around some questions around what well, lots of people ask us actually and uh, hopefully there'll be some questions at the end so before we start um i just want Ali to give us a quick overview he's done some fantastic stuff not just for wavenet uh, where he works but actually in the community as well so ali will you just give us a, a couple of minutes for what who, where you are what you do and also uh, the stuff that you worked around for the community in birmingham yeah sure thank you um tim hello everyone who's joined um i, I, I say that you, in the introduction you said you invited business leaders uh, that i'm far <laughs> from um, uh, and uh, I must say that, you know, something, uh, you know, that just resonates on that notion. Um, now is the time when we should all be doing something for the community. And I think before joining this and on various conversations that you and I have had, the great work you've done for the community, but just talking about what I have done in the industry, really, I've been in the industry, uh, I've, I was practically raised in this industry 20 odd years working for the UC stuff uh, from kilo stream mega stream all the way up to sd WANs, and now you know talking about remote working and uh, amazing uh, digital transformations for organizations of any size um, in multi-billion pound turnovers and stuff um, and in parallel uh, what i've always done is done whatever i could for the community i'm part of the digital board here in the west midlands combined authority i live in a small town called Southern coalfield just on the outskirts of birmingham um, and we were very successful and I was part of the team of six that was responsible for bidding for our first trial uh, 5G testbed, um, working with some true uh, business leaders and we were able to uh, receive uh, a successful bid of 100 million uh, to deploy 5G. Um, so that really is what I've done, uh, you know, based on what I've done in the past and by uh, giving back to the community bit. Thanks, mate. I appreciate that. Yeah, you, you do yourself a disservice as by just glossing over it. Um, we'll talk a little bit in detail about it another day, I think. Um, the reason for uh, Vapor partnering with WaveNet was we actually looked at, as most people know, we have our own network and we have our own SPCs, we run our own Avaya platform, and we were going to build a Microsoft platform ourselves. Why didn't we? Um, a couple of reasons, really. One, it's incredibly difficult. <laughs> Two, um, it's incredibly uh, expensive um, to support uh, and do you get the right level of support? And when we looked at it in detail, um, we felt that we wouldn't give the level of support that we required for the customers and the detail that we required if we built it ourselves and therefore we looked for a partner. And when we looked for a partner, we, stuck, we spoke to Ali and Wavenet and that was a partner that we chose. So. Let me get into the detail a little bit around it of why and loads of questions. So I'm going to fire loads of questions at you, Alice. So just get with it, right? Be a bit like on the chase. I'll try. I'll so try. go with it. So <laughs> go with it. Um, so, you know, just set the scene. We've got about 115 million um, Teams users, but only about seven and a half, eight percent of people use voice. So what are Microsoft trying to get out of this project? What, what are they trying to say? Where are they trying to go with it? They don't want to be a team. They don't want to be a voice player, do they? Really? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think this is this is at Inspire as well, and also in a recent ICS Global Leaders Forum. Uh, Microsoft, by birth, as we all know, and we've known um, for decades, is Microsoft is a software vendor. It's a software as a service organization, um, and they will always be a software as a service vendor. Um, and most recently, when they, I think uh, you you mentioned the figure of 117 plus. Um, active users on Microsoft Teams. If you actually uh, go back 12 months or 18 months and then uh, look at that number, it would be below 10 million. And it kind of tells you that over the period of uh, pandemic and over the course of 12 months, the transformation and home working uh, or remote working in some cases um, has 
taken an accelerated pace and now today we have tenfold growth within Microsoft's own remote working um, uh, functionality. And when there is a huge uptake of teams in the context of remote working for Microsoft services, obviously there is opportunity that Microsoft wanted to explore and that was external calling, which has always been uh, available, but uh, not to the scale that today we see the demand for. Um, and one of the reasons that Microsoft uh, cannot cope with the pressure of uh, serving over 4.5 billion business users around the world, um, and this is the size of the opportunity for Microsoft because this is how many users there are globally using um, directly, indirectly, um, on platform or indirectly API platforms, services that Microsoft provides today in the global ecosystems. So it would not be practical for Microsoft to be able to serve those feature hungry users who live within the enterprise world who demand X, Y, Z, call queues, ring groups, you know, call uh, analytics, dashboards, wallboards, all those amazing things that one would require from their basic UC uh, platform to be then replicated into Microsoft. And that was something which Microsoft was quite open to admit uh, at some of the sessions at Inspire. Um, and we clearly see that too, because the investment into external calling from Microsoft <clears throat> it's a, it remains a mystery if they will catch up and say, you know what, we're going to start eating into uh, Tim's pie, who has been our distributor. We're going to start eating into Tech Data's uh, pie because they've been a distributor and now because they become a UC player and offering external calling a bit like um, I'm really impressed with your strategy on Microsoft external calling platform that you guys have invested into and working in collaboration with uh, WaveNet you have now come up with a platform that not only uh, enhances user experience on Teams, but you're actually offering them far more than what Microsoft is capable of doing. And that is where Microsoft will never encroach into your territory and start eating your pie. But didn't you do, didn't you, WaveNet, I'm going to call you, but didn't WaveNet have the similar concerns that, that I had here at Vapor many years ago when you tried to build the same service and elements around it? And in essence, went and bought a Microsoft player that could help you integrate directly into Microsoft. And so what I want to try and get to today is what's the difference between a WaveNet product direct with us, with Vapor, and yeah. how we manage and support it, and the difference between an 8x8, a Ring Central, a, a Gamma. What's the difference around that? So give us a flavor of why, why you did that, that purchase originally for IT, yeah. and what, does, what difference does that make for the people that are on the call? That, that's a very good question and very relevant too. Um, you will find that as ever since Microsoft enabled or announced that they will be allowing UC players to be able to plug SIP into Microsoft tenancies and be able to break out in normal terms and people would relate to this term direct routing partners. So those partners who were able to do direct routing, um, they would be able to do um, take the plat calls off the platform, plug it into their SPCs, um, session board controllers, and then be able to break out onto their SIP gateways. And that means um, different vendors were doing different approaches. Um, if you talk about some of the vendors who are traditional UC players, i.e. VoIP players, what they were doing was they were saying, hello, Microsoft Teams user, can you just download this soft phone app on your desktop? And this will then integrate into your Teams. Now, straight away, the user experience was compromised because the user was then having to, um, you know, um, manage a, an ecosystem of Microsoft Teams. And then suddenly they're also having to manage the ecosystem of the soft phone on their desktop. And they're having to now play between two systems, although uh, to a degree, the message was that it's inter interoperable. Uh, there was in integration between the two. Uh, and that interoperability between the two systems is where the question mark is user experience is compromised and also if you think about a Microsoft user, uh, Microsoft had the capability of accommodating tenfold growth but the question is would a SIP or traditional SIP provider have the capacity to be able to account for that level of demand and that level of acceleration and that level of on their platform and as a direct result of which I don't want to you know name any vendors here but in Europe we saw a lot of SIP providers having outages why were there outages? Primarily because of the overload. We've seen and we've spoken to partners who have decided to take uh, Teams Link, which is the uh, pioneering product that we have got and proprietary to, um, because it does not rely too much uh, on downloading external uh, platforms. It does not want you to download additional soft phones 
all it tells you to do is we are native to Microsoft Teams experience. You do not need to download, and that's Vapor's message too to its community. The yeah. reason why you invested in deploying Teams Link in your ecosystem was that, I mean, you yourself are a well-established ISP. You yourself are well-established UC house. You are a buyer partner. You've got pedigree in the marketplace, decades of experience, but you still decided and identified that very reliability on the SIP gateways alone and lack of functionality. Then you yeah. also talk about um, compromised user experience. So a Microsoft user, if you say to them, hey, listen, um, you don't need to download anything. You don't need to download any skins. You don't need to download any add-ons. Your Teams, wherever your Teams goes, our Teams link goes with you with all the features like call groups, ring groups. And that really is the reason why I feel WaveNet needed to make that investment because we were in the same shoe as you were two years ago. So we mm. needed to make that investment in acquiring a business that had that skill set and that education and knowledge gap that we had within our camp. We acquired the business. And once we did make the acquisition, we then just didn't sit on our laurels. We actually continued investing uh, in develop developing that platform. And it was a perfect marriage, I'd say. And now proof is in the proof of pudding is in the eating. No, I agreed. I agreed on that piece. So let's go through some bits really quick as well. Porting. Mm -hmm. Can we port? You certainly can. Um, you can port all over the UK. You can port internationally in 132 countries. And you can also do the external calling as well. Contact centre. Uh, there is limitation. Um, so it really is how much you want to throw at it. If you want to um, uh, do omnichannel contact centre, we do have arrangements in place like you do too. You have relationship with Content Guru. We've got yeah. vendors like Five9 and Content Guru. So Teams Link has the ability to integrate with an omnichannel platform. But if you were to talk to a SME or mid-market customer um, who does not want to invest, you know, uh, upwards of hundred pounds per month per seat, then there is a feature within Teams Link that provides you a uh, reasonable uh, fee amount of feature set within the contact center, but it's not omnichannel, but it certainly is a, f a contact center functionality from day one that we've offered. Okay, good. Reporting, I'll come back. I want to I want to add a little bit on the end of this when you finish, but reporting. Yes, it offers you reporting. It gives you two variants of reporting. One that you know Vapor would set the presets, uh, i.e., preset templates of reporting that you can go in and say, for example, I want to look at the user report. Click user report. Put the date filter. Find it. Or um, you can also have a bit more advanced reporting based on your call queues and based on your dashboards that you've set up. And that's the contact center functionality which is built in within Teams. Recording. It certainly has offer. Um, uh, it, it certainly has uh, call, re call recording on offer. And the best feature of call recording is that it is MIFID compliant, MIFID 2 compliant. It is PCI Brilliant. compliant. It is requirement DSS requirement 4 compliant. So any variant of call recording. And the best part is that you're not leaving Teams. Everything is within Teams. You're not ha we're not asking if download any additional stuff. Last quick question, CRM integration. It does offer CRM integration by default and we don't charge for it if you're on a pro user and we offer you Salesforce integration. We offer you Microsoft Dynamics CRM integration and we also have five additional vendors which we will be announcing soon. Okay, cool. What I want to get back to that reporting piece is one of the reasons why we, we invested heavily with you which is understanding the business intelligence part of it and the analytical part of the platform. We're going to work with, with a company, an analytics platform called Tiger. But mm -hmm. what that platform will allow us to do is pull all the data that comes from, and we get this because people are working more at home. Yep. So we want, to be, we want to look at the behavioral pieces around that, but we want to be able to look and, and, and report on how many IMs, how many emails, how many video calls, what time of day, on what platform, on what service, whether it's on the network or it's on a mobile, however that works. That that information and data, because we plug directly into Microsoft with you, we've got the ability of putting all that BI back, haven't we? You know, totally. Whereas, whereas from a direct routing point of view, you've only got the ability to pull the voice back because you've only pulled the voice. Here we've That's got it. the ability to pull the whole dynamic or the whole BI back and then do yeah. something with it. 
Yeah, no, totally. And I think this is uh, this is absolutely important for many CSPs and ISPs who are now um, uh, venturing into integration with their own analytics platforms, their own uh, investments that they've made historically. Um, and this is again a gap within Microsoft. But what we've managed to do, we've managed to um, throw resources at what we've developed, and we now have the ability to offer Power BI KPI uh, APIs. And that Power BI API will draw the raw data into your platform. For example, if your platform is Tiger platform, um, that will allow you to use and manipulate that data and produce reports and templates in the format that you and your users are used to within their ecosystems. And that really is quite powerful. Um, and I believe this is the USB of uh, one of the USBs of Teams Link. Big piece for me is support. OK, mm -hmm. so we've got the ability of supporting here. We've also got the ability of working with WaveNet on support, but I also believe we've got the ability of going right back through into Microsoft and having Microsoft help support us with you guys as well. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. Um, and this is this is where I believe that you know Teams Link is um, a far superior product uh, when compared with any other direct routing. Uh, we don't even think that direct routing partners or direct routing a variant of external calling on Teams is even a, a com competition of ours. Uh, we compete directly with Microsoft on their call package, and that's really what it comes down to. If you compare Microsoft's uh, external calling functionality, and it might be a, a wild claim, but it is educated and calculated and analyzed claim, um, that we compete with Microsoft's external call packages. Um, and when you talk about Microsoft's external call plan, comes with it are all the features which Microsoft offers. And when you compare them against what Vapor stroke, Teams Link stroke, WaveNet are able to offer, you clearly see that we leave you know, Microsoft way behind and equally the same support mechanism that you replicate with your customers. Um, we actually do facsimile of that within our ecosystem and we have relationships with Microsoft up to the point where distributors, leading distributors of Microsoft are customer of WaveNet. So you know the pedigree of distributors. I mean, if you were to talk to a distributor and say, do you have a relationship with Microsoft? They will say, yeah, Microsoft's sitting inside the room. And that's the level of, uh, you know, relationship uh, strength we have as well. And re retrospectively, your customer and your partners will share the same. Okay, good. Um, let's talk a little bit about deployment. Let's talk about the speed and the ease of deployment. So you've got your 365 license. We know that you need to go buy a voice license on top. So you need to come yeah, yeah. back to most. Yeah, you can come and buy, we're now a Microsoft player with, with, uh, with tech data, you can come and buy that from us. And um, you could buy that from your, your existing uh, Microsoft uh, support parts that you've already yeah. got, so CSP. But in essence, you need a voice license to run on top of your 365 license. When you've got that, talk to me about the speed of ease and deployment. So once you've got your E1s, E3, A1, E5, those type of licenses, which are which is where you basically get your Office 365 and Teams, and various services associated with it. And I think 98% of the business in the UK already have that. Um, then you need business voice license. What business voice license allows you to do, it then allows you to have the collaboration capabilities with the external world, but you're still not able to make or receive calls because the third aspect of it is call plan. So either you'd buy call plan from Microsoft, which is where I was drawing the parallel between Vapors and WaveNet's Teams link, and Microsoft's call plan or call package, um, because that call plan will take literally uh, for a distributor to activate that, it will take something like 10 minutes and it takes two minutes for us to turn that on. So, for example, I'm not ignoring all the bureaucracy, red tape, you know, I, I need to receive the order. It needs to go on the portal and then press, you know, even that takes only 24 hours for us to activate a user. But once we have received the order and our provisioning guys now looking at this order and this is for 100 users and these 100 users uh, need Teams Link enabling. Um, we have through the um, admin uh, user license, we have the capability that we can turn that user, uh, those that the block of user, 50 users with Teams Link within the very minute. We can literally just, and we can give you the capability, you can create the user. Uh, and I think I've done this on many demos with you. Uh, yeah, you can have, create yeah. the user. As soon as you create the user in real time, if that user exists on Microsoft tenancy, you would be able to make external calls. That's how straightforward it is. It's real time. Okay, good. 
Um, you talked there about core packages. You know, Microsoft packages we know in certain circumstances can be expensive if you're going to go direct. Expensive. Yeah. Um, and they're going to be, and they're in different countries. Explain that. Explain WebNet's package and explain how that builds through us and into the client. I think this would be very relevant to the audience uh, uh, who may already be operating in the world of voice. Um, yeah. So the way Microsoft works, Microsoft would say, right, OK, we're going to give you software licenses for these E1s, E3s, which is Office 365 license in common term. And then you need to buy a business voice license, but you're still not able to make calls. But when you buy call plans and they if I talk about their highest variant of call plan, um, you'd pay something like eight, nine pounds for that. And then once you've paid for that call plan, you only get 1200 minutes and then and this is the bit which annoys a lot of CSPs and distributors. At this point, Microsoft expects the end user, end user could be tier three, tier four or tier two, regardless of uh, which pecking order they sit in, Microsoft expects the user to have their credit card details registered directly with Microsoft so that Microsoft could charge them for calls. And in most cases, the support related calls, which were, I'm unable to dial, were because there was not enough credit and Microsoft doesn't prompt its users that, hey, you're, you've just run out of credit. And that really is not enterprise grade and it's not sustainable and it's just not right. So compared to what Vapor or Teams Link has the capability of doing is unlimited calls, full stop. You don't have to worry about it. Even if customer does make <clears throat> out of uh, allowance calls, those calls will still be billed through to CSP CSP will then bill the reseller if there is one in the middle and then the reseller will then bill its end customer. That means end customer will never have an interaction with Microsoft, will never have an interaction with uh, Teams Link Vendor, i.e. Vapor. They will just deal with the ecosystem that they're part of and that billing stream would then be uh, a single billing stream rather than, oh, can I have your credit card details so that I could bill you for the calls? It, that That's just very clunky and that's the Microsoft way versus Teams Link way. So unlimited calls capability of dialing internationally without you having to buy the international bolt-on uh, you just pay for the calls and you know the calls that we our call tariff is unlimited for uk uh, local national mobile and you also know that internationally it's quite comparable to what cps rates we're used to yeah okay no i appreciate that um who's the contract with for teams link you mean Correct. So if someone wants to work with us, make sure that the contract's with us. The contract is, is with us. It's not with Microsoft, it's not with you, it's not with Webinar. It is a vapor contract and we work with you as our as our partner to support That's exactly, that's exactly it. So um, this is where any aspect of this ecosystem, any aspect of this food chain, whoever is the sponsor for the next tier of this food chain would be responsible for the contract. Uh, so if you have your end customer or if you have a partner who wants to serve their customer community and they buy Teams Link from you, uh, which I recommend they do, um, then that means they will contract, enter into a contract with their end customer and you may actually have a monthly rolling plan with them. So you are giving your reseller a freedom of signing up to the end customer on 12 month term, 36 month term. Whereas you may say, you know what, Mr. Strategic Partner, there is no term for you, just monthly rolling. Exactly how Microsoft operates. So, mm. so that is something which again, we have the ability, depending on the type of partner it is, to offer you that level of flexibility, replic replicating exactly what Microsoft offers. What, one thing we sometimes hear about with certain plans is that you can't, you have to have one set of licenses and you can't mix and match. So you can't, so just explain to the difference between the two licenses that you've got and that you can mix and match between the two. No, that's a, that's a good point, actually. Uh, unlike other vendors and unlike Microsoft directly themselves, um, what happens normally is, so Teams Link comes with two variants of its license types. One would be Teams Link Standard and the other one is Teams Link Pro. Teams Link Standard gives you, you know, your traditional UC capability. There's no compromise on your functionality, but it doesn't have your contact center bundle. And we feel that sometimes if there is an organization of 500 users, they may only have 80, 90 or 100 people working in the contact center environment and therefore buying contact center 
license, which is relatively more expensive, would be a bit of an overkill for the whole organization and it doesn't drive cost efficiency. So Teams Link has this capability whereby you can actually define that these 80 users only require bolt-on, these 220 users um, out of 300 do not require bolt-on and by the way within these uh, 80 users that you've just given call, uh, contact center bundle to we only need to buy 40 call recordings because these are the guys working in compliance part for example so it's a mix and match of you deciding what level of functionality you want to throw at your users and this is how you can drive cost efficiency and you don't have to contract enter into a contract for the whole estate on one type of license just because 80 out of 400 need it. No, agreed on that. Yeah, because we do see that from time to time. The last point before I, I, I'll, let you, I'll let you finish off. Um, you've got what I would class as, a, as like a call flow plan, call routing, call flow plans inside the environment. Mm -hmm. Now, normally, in a lot of instances, that's a chargeable piece of work um, to build yes. those call plans up and build that call flow up. This you can build up, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's, that, is that on the contact center license or is it also on the normal license as well? It is actually on offer on both. So, both. Okay, thank you. so, so what you're asking is that uh, we, we also have, this is one of the USPs that we actually yeah. give a visual routing manager. So visual routing manager is for those IT leaders or those IT managers who may not be skilled in configuring voice but they may be fantastic at you know doing their work in the ISP world setting up firewalls and then suddenly uh, teams or suddenly the external calling has become part of their role and they're now thinking what do we do so for those IT managers and at the same time those IT managers who are more informed uh, with the wo world of voice um, we have given them a visual routing manager which means that literally just drag and drop type uh, real-time um, a call route map where you can decide if a call comes into your main 0800 number what happens to the call well just put option one for sales okay who's in sales just throw some users at sales call group okay well option two is for this and you don't have to then do coding of it you simply drag and drop drag and drop and you've seen this many yeah. times it Absolutely. takes three four yeah. minutes for yeah. an organization of 50 users to be configured like that that again is very very powerful and that's on offer for every type of user license every type of license and that's free you can that's, that's free part, that's free part of i say okay. it's inclusive it's not free it's inclusive yeah inclusive inclusive i like, I like the inclusive way better right yeah. okay um i've covered most of my questions is there anything bang on half an hour before we take a couple of questions if there are any hopefully there are um anything that i've missed anything that you want to get anything that you want to advise the people that are on around the product set and anything that i've missed across it i think i would i, I would very highly recommend that those uh, organizations who are uh, new at exploring external capability of teams in the context of calling um, you do not fall uh, for a product whereby you have to download an additional software um, they may be amazing I don't want it's, it's just not my style to you know uh, discourage people from um, you know exploring a vendor do do your exploration but whatever you do just don't compromise on your user experience if your user experience is compromised and how one of the ways by which you may be able to compromise your user experience is by incorporating additional services and downloading additional stuff and in the name of integration and all in one no it won't be as soon as you change the vendor and you now are having to you know you're now having to work on a different uh, software system altogether then this is it user experience compromised yeah, I'll, I'll just add a bit to that. The reason we came and worked with you guys is really, as I spoke quickly about earlier, around the business intelligence around that, around the platform being able to look at behaviours. We, we feel that the business intelligence, the analytics around platforms are going to grow exponentially over the next few years, especially as we're all working Absolutely. disparate and we're all working in a hybrid environment. OK, we need to make sure we're looking after people's health and well-being. We also need to make sure that when people are doing the jobs as well and looking after them and the ability to pull that BI out individually or with teams or as a group and deliver that to the management team, senior management team, whoever that be exec leads, is really, really important for us moving forward. And that's one of the main reasons we went, we came and worked with you because we've got that BI right directly from Microsoft, not from a third party, not from mm. direct routine, not from anywhere else, but the ability to say, well, actually, how how many emails did Tim take this week? How many IMs? How many videos? Because 
if he's logged on for 16 hours a day in front of his laptop, we need to make sure that we're giving them, we're looking after him in the right way, you know, corporate and health and well-being. And we yeah. need to make sure that that's, that's important to us as a business. We talked about ethical businesses earlier before we came on. We and, did, and yes. And it's very much prevalent for us, making sure it's not the big brother analytics of how much work did you do, or that could be used in that scenario if someone's slacking. The yeah. challenges around making sure that we understand what's happening to our to our workforce when it's disparate and it's not in the office. That's one of the fundamental reasons why we, why we chose Wave. Well, no, totally, totally right. I think that, that that is actually shared by many business leaders who actually have adopted Teams Link. And it's, as you can see, it's been adopted by the key distributors uh, in Europe, we are already in Australia, we're in Singapore, we're in Greece, we're in Western Europe. Um, and yesterday when you and I were talking, I was already in discussions in the US. Uh, there is huge demand in the US and Canada and I am uh, responsible for taking it to the US and Canada as well and um, you know, watch this space. So either join the party or just watch us fly. Yeah. No, I agree, I agree. I like the product, that's why, that's why we work together on it. Um, right. Alec, fantastic. Um, Greta, I don't know if there's any questions. If there are, can you let us know? If there are any? Um, yeah, so we've had a couple of questions submitted throughout. Um, some of them okay. you've already covered, um, such as sort of the what, who's the contract with. Um, yeah. But here's one. Um, do Microsoft have some involvement in supporting? So the ecosystem is fairly uh, uh, well structured um, so Microsoft licenses and this is the reason why we uh, encourage partners to continue keeping their uh, licenses within where they uh, you know vendor list is so for example if you're buying your licenses ie your e1 e3 e5 licenses from Tim or from uh, a Microsoft approved um, a CSP um, then you can keep that license there. If you are buying your E1s, E3s from a CSP, then you can keep your business voice license there. And it's just a call plan. It's just a call plan which we are selling. And that call plan is the external calling capability on Microsoft Native Team. And together with that, we give you Power BI capabilities. We give you an API to integrate in your internal systems, a bit like what uh, Vapor are doing. Um, and we also give you a separate portal whereby you could actually run your call queues, you could run your call, uh, arrange your uh, ring groups, you can set up your call flow. And that really is how simple and easy um, to manage e ecosystem. So you will continue to have your relationship with Microsoft. There is nobody in between you and Microsoft. I think what also gets to what, what we're trying to say there is if there's, a, if there's an issue on the platform, Yes, we can speak to WaveNet and support with WaveNet, but if it's a Microsoft support platform, a Microsoft issue, then WaveNet have got the ability to go directly into Microsoft and yeah, help and Microsoft have, Microsoft well. yeah. have Microsoft support with Microsoft support with regards to that. That's good. Anything okay, else? Thank you. Uh, yeah, so lastly, um, what hardware works? Ah, hardware. Interesting. That's a good question. I think every laptop is your hardware, every yeah. A uh, mobile vendor is your hardware. Wherever Microsoft Teams work is the hardware. Uh, but in traditional sense, i.e. Uh, deck phones and you know phones on your desk that you can actually touch, feel and pick up and say hello on. Um, there is a list of Microsoft vendors that they have approved. I think they've approved Yearlink, they've approved Audio Codes, they've approved Polycom. And I'm quite impressed that Yearlink and Poly are within that ecosystem because um, they capture uh, over 60% of UK um, uh, VoIP market anyway. So you'll find where there is, uh, you know, hardware on VoIP, you'll find one of these two vendors definitely on people's uh, work desks. I think what you find in a lot of instances is that we, we're getting much more used to this world rather than the desk phone. I think definitely. the desk phones are dying out as much. I've got one on my desk. I've never picked it up actually. Um, <laughs> Same. <laughs> The standard joke in our office that I've got a desk phone and I never use it. So I think I think that's the point. I think you know traditionally we have one. People don't like to lose it yeah. um, in a work environment. But when they're at home, they definitely don't want a phone on the desk at home. They want to work in a different environment. So I think we'll see that that shift over a period of time to that to the hardware. It's why Panasonic or something like that have come out of the out of the UK market because of the hardware services around it. Definitely fantastic. Alec, you've been a gentleman. Appreciate your time. I'm sorry I fired questions at you like it's on the chase, but I just thought it was the easiest way, the easiest way to get through it. Um, 
Greta, this will be uploaded to our YouTube channel in about 24 hours or something like that. It'll be on there for people to see. Yeah, it'll be there as soon as possible um, for everybody to have another look at if they wish or share with anybody. Um, yeah, um, I think we'll be able to email it out as well if anybody wants. Fantastic. Ali, appreciate your time, mate, and have a good no, day. Thank you, Tim. Thank you very much, guys. All the best, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone. See you soon. Thank you.